Looking to rent out your house? Well, let me tell you a story of two friends of mine who are trying to do the same. The first, we'll call him Jerry to protect the guilty. The other friend we'll call Sarah because her name is actually Sarah. Both could have sold their homes, but they didn't want to pay the real estate agent. They didn't want to have the hassle. And honestly, they just realized that if they kept the property, they'd start naturally building wealth. My name is David Green, real estate investor, realtor, best-selling author, and host of the Bigger Pockets podcast, the top real estate podcast on the planet with over 65 million downloads. And in this video, I wanna share my top five rental tips for renting out your home. Let's make sure your experience is a lot more like Sarah's and not as much like Jerry's. Stay tuned. Okay, so back to Jerry and Sarah. They both rented out their homes when they moved on to bigger and better properties. But Jerry ended up hating the entire experience. His tenants ended up not paying rent on time, like ever. They trashed the home, caused a bunch of damage, and really just made life miserable for Jerry. Sarah, on the other hand, had great tenants. They took care of the property, never had to wake up Sarah in the middle of the night, and when they finally moved out, it looked even better than when they moved in. So. Was it luck? Not a chance. Sarah followed the five tips that I'm about to share with you. And if you do the same, I think you'll find similar results. And hey, if you like this video, do me a favor and click that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. Okay, on to the five tips. Tip number one, screen your tenant. Your tenant will make or break your deal. Therefore, you gotta do the work up front to ensure a great tenant. In most areas, you can hire a real estate agent to do this for you or you can just do it yourself. Place ads, run a background check using software like Rent Prep or Cozy, and make sure they have stable income and no eviction. I know it's tempting to rent out to someone that you like and trust your gut, but this ain't no hobby. This is the care of your home, your someday retirement, and your future wealth. Tip number two, set clear expectations for your tenant. Have you ever told a kid to go clean their room and they just go shove everything under the bed and proudly say, I'm done? Technically, they might be right, but because you didn't set clear expectations for what you wanted, you didn't get the result you needed. The same is true for tenants. You've gotta lay out clear expectations for what your business relationship is going to look like. For most landlords, this means using a solid lease agreement and onboarding the tenant correctly. Let them know what an emergency is and what it's not, when and how they should contact you, and what the expectations are for rent and what happens if they don't pay. Trust me, taking time to set expectations up front is gonna save you years of trouble down the road. Now, go clean your room. Tip number three, develop sound systems. I recommend the LG X-Boom 550 watt speaker Dave, system in Dave, black Dave, because Dave, the sound is- Dave, sound systems, like systems. Oh, not sound systems, I mean sound systems, like solid repeatable processes in your business that make things run. What do I mean? Like, do you know what to do when the tenant pays rent late? What's that system look like? How do they pay rent? Systemize your business and work much, much less. This applies to every business owner, whether you own a McDonald's or you're renting your home. Develop sound systems. Tip number four, keep reserves. One of the reasons landlords despair is because they fail to prepare. I know that was cheesy, but you know what's not cheesy? Not having money set aside for that rainy day. Because guess what? Stuff breaks a lot. Last week, the water heater went out in one of my rentals. There's a few hundred bucks right down the drain. But because I expect stuff like that to happen, I set aside reserves. Those things never kill me. It's just the cost of doing business. And finally, number five, outsource what you don't like. You wanna know what one of the stupidest things I ever did in real estate was? I nearly ended my real estate investment career before it even began. It was a shame. Because I wanted to do everything myself, I managed the property, took the phone calls, found the tenants, fixed the stuff, collected the rent, and I hated it. I just wasn't that good at it and it didn't bring energy into my life. So eventually I got smart and I hired a property manager. And since that day, my landlord has become 100,000 times easier. Now my manager does all those steps we've been talking about today and I don't have to. Yes, I pay them something, but the cost is well worth it. So my final tip is this, outsource stuff that you don't like or want to do or aren't gonna be good at. Look, if you're willing to do the tips from this video, you'll probably have a great landlord experience and that's what I want for you. But if not, and this sounds like something you aren't gonna do, outsource it.
Being a landlord doesn't have to feel like a drag. You don't have to be like my friend Jerry. You can be like Sarah and own a great profitable rental property. And it might just end up being a perfect foundation for future investments. And hey, if you want to know more about real estate investing, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Click that little thumbs up button and pick up my copy of the two books I wrote, Long Distance Real Estate Investing and Buy, Rehab, Rent, Refinance, Repeat. For BiggerPockets.com, my name is David Green and this is Brandon Turner signing off. <laughs> I think he ad-libbed that part. <laughs> That's what true commitment looks like. You're like Van Gogh cutting off his ear. What? I said that was like, I was awesome. That's what true commitment looks like. Yeah.